amazing. So the purpose of today's video is we supposed to be showing you guys uh, the progression exercise for the human flag. Have no fear, I'm still gonna shoot it. I hope the mic is working. Now the reason why you're watching the video is probably one of two reasons. You're here to hate or you're here to learn about the human flag. Hopefully, even if you're here to hate, you do learn about the human flag. So guys, uh, I'm gonna show you progression exercises that you can do to strengthen the, the human flag and to actually do specific training to get in that human flag position. So it's not as hard, I mean, it, it, don't get me wrong, it is a difficult move, it looks really cool, but it's not as hard as a lot of people make it out to be. So I'm gonna show you some strengthening exercises for your shoulders, your core, uh, your back. Every muscle group, which is probably every muscle group, is involved in this exercise. So stay tuned, keep watching and you're gonna see. Don't leave yet. Chicken feeling. Chicken feeling. Take this. Now the first question that you guys have to ask yourself, if gains was a currency, would it be a peasant or would you be filthy rich? So basically, if you're a peasant of gains, what does that mean? You gotta work, man, you gotta work. So you just assess what level you're beginning at. If you're a total beginner, it's gonna take a lot more work, simple. If, uh, I mean, you're filthy rich with the gains and you know, it's a couple steps you have to take and you get there. But fortunately for you guys, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it, so no biggie. What's up, journalists? So really quickly, I just wanna let you know, I actually shot and edited this video two years ago, 2017, we're now in 2019. But I'm just adding this in to let you guys know, recently, uh, I did a Human Flag collaboration with Austin Dunham on his page. So go and check that out. There's some good information that you guys can use from there. So let's get into the, the, the details of things now. All right, first and foremost, you want to make sure that you're confident in the structural integrity of your ligaments, joints, and tendons. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> So if you guys want a further breakdown of this tutorial, make sure you guys hit the link in the description below. I have a page, um, I'm reading from this right now. So make sure you guys go and click and follow along. I'm gonna read it out. This is a section from there right now. So we're talking about the structural integrity of the ligaments, joints, muscles, and so on. Are the ligaments, tendons, and muscles within the shoulder region strong and flexible enough to sustain a great amount of your body weight? Major key. It's important to know this because the muscles of the shoulders can easily be injured. So, for example, with me, when I was first starting, not even when I was first starting, if I don't train for a while, like a long time, um, and I try and go for a long hold or a weighted hold, I'll feel a lot of pressure, of pressure, especially in my teres major, teres minor muscles. It is important to understand the anatomy of the shoulder. It has such a wide range of motion, and due to that, you know, it's it's susceptible to injuries. It's not like the the femur, you know, where it's deep inside the hip cavity this is such a free moving moving joint you know things like that high volume workouts uh, especially what you'll be doing uh, long holds and things like that you got to make sure that the integrity the structural integrity of your shoulders is secure it is so easy to get injured and I'm telling you time and time again even me from not like beginner stage this is when I was far along in my journey get injured because I'm not paying attention to these little things when it comes down to the structural integrity of my shoulders. And the last point you want to be sure of 
is your core strength and stability adequate? So these are the main points you wanna check before you even attempt to do the human flag. Go through a little checklist and be honest with yourself. Go through that and make sure, because once again, guys, you can't train if you're injured. You cannot progress if you're injured. So make sure you take the appropriate steps, go through the appropriate progressions to make sure that you uh, obviously want to avoid injury, but you get there in a safe manner. And of course, you want to get it. So you don't want to take off time by being injured. Let's move on. Now, if you follow my brain gains, if you follow me on Instagram, then you do at least have a little bit of a heads up as, as to how the human flag is performed, the mechanics and psychomotor skill and all that stuff. So we do know that it is a largely a skill dependent movement. Uh, what does that mean? It's not so much based on strength. Obviously, if it was based on strength, every bodybuilder in the gym would be able to do it. But you actually have to do specific training and get those motor neuron, neurons, motor pathways developed. So your mind, your body knows what your mind is telling it to do. So we're gonna talk about the pushing and pulling. You need to have a controlled environment to allow your body to be able to train into that manner. Automatically, you should know, I'm telling you right now, the top hand is gonna be generating the pulling force, the bottom hand is generating the pushing force. So when you create uh, the, I would say a balanced amount of energy with the pushing and pulling, that is when your torso will begin to rise off the ground. But of course, you have to have that alignment. Alignment, um, we're gonna get into that a little bit later, where I talk about, you know, head, um, head through the shoulders, stacking the joints. We're gonna get into that in a second. But I'm just running through to let you know that this is a skill-dependent movement. So don't be like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not super strong. Um, the more you practice, being being in the form um, of the human flag, the easier it will be. Even if you're not the strongest person, you know, I can't do 500 pull-ups and you know, things like that. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be extremely strong. And that's why I said people kind of over, overthink how difficult, I mean, overthink, like there's not that difficult. Like I said, don't get me wrong. It does take training just like any other movement, but it's not as difficult as people make it out to be. So once again, psychomotor skill development pushing, pulling, stacking the joints, which we're gonna get into. But number one, I'm telling you, hand, top hand, like I'm gonna show you in the in the tutorial, top hand right here, bottom hand, push and pull, push and pull, push, push, pull, push, pull. Remember that, keep saying that to yourself. Push, bottom hand, pull, top hand. And even when you switch, you're gonna switch um, sides, same thing. Uh, yeah, I'm looking in the screen to make sure that my hand, you can see me. So. Pulling hand at the top, pushing hand at the bottom. I'm stressing that. That's why I'm taking so much time right now so you guys understand that. So right now, while you're sitting or wherever you are, even if you're in the gym, if you're in the street, whatever, if you're in the park, find the pole and practice that right now. Pushing bottom hand, pulling top hand. Just like that. Same thing, you switch sides, top hand. Remember, always the top hand that does the pulling. Top hand that does the pulling, bottom hand that does the pushing. Let's move on again. So technique, let us stress on the technique right now. So I'm gonna have the video over so you're gonna listen to me while I talk. Um, making sure, once again, I, I said at the beginning is the mobility part, mobility and flexibility. You have to have sufficient mobility. Look, I'm not the most flexible person in the world, but I have sufficient overhead mobility to make sure that I can hold that movement comfortably. I mean, hold that, that isometric um, position comfortably. Remember, it takes a, it puts a lot of stress on your teres major and teres minor muscles. Also lats and traps, you know, the whole upper body there, but you're going to feel it, especially in your teres major, teres minor. I have actually torn my teres um, major performing the human flag before I was, you know, I had sufficient overhead uh, mobility and just trying to jump right into it, um, adding additional resistance and it, it became, you know, overbearing for my muscles. They weren't strong enough at that point. So once again, make sure you have that adequate mobility, um, uh, shoulder mobility. You can do drills with, with uh, the resistance bands. You can do uh, dynamic stretching. So many different things to increase your mobility. So that is a major thing uh, that you you want to have before you even get into uh, getting on that pole and beginning to get into the human flag, flag position. So mobility, um, flexibility. Think about that. Guys, write these things down or just go to the website and I have everything listed uh, on the website. So you can follow along just letting you guys know right now uh so you you're like oh what is he saying but you can go and follow the guide so guys remember overhead mobility that's what your hands are going to be overhead mobility 
mobility, a lot of stress on your teres major, teres minor muscles. Pay attention to that. You're going to have to strengthen those muscles if you want to hold it comfortably and not tear anything. No injuries, we don't want any injuries. Don't rush, take your time, progress into it, build the strength, build the mobi uh, get your mobility up, get your flexibility to increase. Now here in part two, I'm going to be showing you a series of uh, mobility drills and flexibility drills to just, once again, avoid injury, uh, get your psychomotor skill development there and prepare. So this is a, a good one for engaging the core, working the posterior chain, uh, pretty much every muscle uh, that is responsible for the human flag. So this is this anyone can really do this one you just have a band uh, this is a pretty light band I would recommend using a light band especially uh, to bring that arm when the arm is straight to bring it straight back out it produces a lot of resistance so this one right here this is um, excellent for working the terrace major terrace minor and uh, once again get filling that position how you would feel in the human flag on um, that resistance on those muscles there so as you see the band one they're crossed so one um, the one in my right hand is under my left foot and then uh, vice versa with the other one. So full range of motion, that's what we're working on here. I was talking about, remember I was talking about having that full uh, range of motion, having that good overhead mobility. This will definitely help you do that. So uh, another one that I like to do, which I don't have videoed here, uh, I'll probably add that into a future video, is having the band tied to something over me. It's hard to explain, but actually pulling it down, um, having the resistance uh, yeah, having the resistance above me and pulling it down instead of having it under me and pulling it up. So that does make a difference as well. I'll have that in a future video. So stay tuned for that. So uh, once again, this is now heavier resistance. So you can, as you progress, as you get stronger, you progress into uh, using more resistance. You can even do this on the same day. I actually uh, tend to do this uh, like a workout. I tend to do it for like a workout. It's exactly the same thing, nothing changes. And as you see, I'm, I'm kind of changing up the tempo uh, slower on the eccentric, because remember the, the human flag is an isometric exercise, but if you wanna get more dynamic and uh, really develop that you know, dynamic flag, like the human flag pull-ups and whatnot, drills like this uh, do transfer over as well. So also play around with changing the position of your hand from neutral, supinated, pronated, uh, just turn your hand around when you're doing those different, those different uh, hand movements, uh, attempt those repetitions with that as well. So now we're getting more into that like very specific uh, mo uh, modality. As you know, the human flag, your body is in a it is in a parallel position to the ground. So as we see here, we are in a parallel position to the ground. I started with uh, the band, the resistance was rather light, so I moved out a little bit more and I, of course, increased the resistance that way, or you can just increase by putting a heavier band. So play around, stay high, get low. You know, as you see, I started on my hand, then I went onto my elbow, um, and just look at the position of my feet there. And remember, when we're doing unilateral exercises, what do we do? We always do both sides, always. We want structural balance. And even when you're practicing the human flag, uh, do both both uh, sides. So don't just do your strong side, you know, which we tend to do. Uh, I When I started, I actually started, I believe, with my weaker side. And then I progressed on to doing it with my my stronger side. And when you do it on the on both the strong side and the weak side, your overall flag becomes stronger, which makes sense. So as you see, like I said, this is more of a specific. I'm feeling this in really my terrace major, terrace minor muscles, which are largely responsible for uh, holding the human flag, but also, you know, in my delts and, and the rhomboids, the rare chain. So this is another good one, uh, working the posterior chain. Contrary to popular belief, like I like I uh, mentioned in the human flag tutorial with Austin Dunham, is not a ton of core that you're really that's really getting you in the human flag. It is shoulders. So having strong shoulders really is what makes the difference in having a nice, solid, strong flag. So, like I said, I like to move. I like to stay mobile. So when I'm doing stuff like this, I don't just move in one plane of motion. Uh, I know my flags are pretty dynamic. I do, you know, a lot of human flag pull-ups and uh, change the position of my flag. And I want it to be done with ease. So being able to have that wide range of motion 
uh, that strength at, at every angle, it, it really does help. So performing drills like this, just do it like a regular workout, like I said. You can do it for multiple sets, uh, multiple reps. Uh, it is an isometric movement. So remember, this is what you're seeing right here, isometrics with the body weight. This does this does wonders. This does miracles when you're doing even with just your body weight, uh, slapping on 25 pounds after that does actually make a big difference as well. Doing weighted uh, high resistance pull ups as well. Of course, if you're a total beginner, don't do this, but uh, do to your limit. I kind of I tend to go from a is strength and power. So I tend to go from three to five repetitions. Uh, maybe more sometimes, but I tried to have enough resistance to do that. So this is, I believe, one of the last exercises for the mobility drills. Uh, we're getting that that overhead mobility once again. This is a great uh, exercise to do that. So you can, if you wanna use like a PVC pipe or something like that, that works as well. I like to use a band because it has more give, um, but sometimes, you know, having the, the pipe uh, in order to maintain that distance, it does help as well because think about it when you're holding onto the band, I mean, when you're holding onto the pole, uh, you're in a fixed position. So having that, that kind of, that specific uh, movement there when you're holding the PVC pipe, it does kind of have more of a, a mimic of holding the pole um, when you're doing that, the human, the human flag. So like I said, the whole, the range of motion all the way over, you can start with just minimal, you don't have to go all the way over the head, but of course, when you, as you progress in order to increase that, that uh, range of motion and, and flexibility, you wanna go all the way over. So just keep that those things in mind. And uh, once again, this is a unilateral. Oh, I change the band to a lighter band first. I use a lighter band. So yeah, you can you can. I would I would always recommend starting with the lighter band. Uh, just really, especially if like you're just warming up and doing things like that. Start with the, the lighter band uh, because you want to make sure that number one, we're not getting injured, we're not overworking the muscle, and we, of course we want to perform the exercise properly. So right now I'm just keeping the arm straight, and then you see I go into a pushing a pushing movement after. So the arm comes down and I control the eccentric motion, the arm coming down, control it and push back up, working those uh, those mid delts, uh, rear delts, traps, working all those major muscles that are responsible for performing the human flag. I know this is a pretty long video, right? Like I said, this is the ultimate God. If you follow all the, the stuff in here, there is absolutely no way that you will not be able to achieve the human flag. It's literally impossible. I guarantee you that. This is the exact drills that I've helped uh, that I've used to help everybody who I've helped uh, achieve a human flag. This is exactly what I give them. Uh, people who go from relatively having not a lot of strength, period, to be to growing a, a, a massive amount of strength by doing these drills alone. So play around with the tempo, play around with the, the time under tension, which you know kind of falls under tempo. Uh, spend, yeah, spend a, a lot of time with the eccentric training, especially if you're more advanced. Spend more time doing the eccentric training that will greatly increase the amount of strength that you have that you develop uh, overall, not just for the human flag, but overall. But of course, we're talking about the human flag here so that's what I'm, I'm referring to so eccentric training is just that negative portion right there you see as my arm comes down that's the concentric going up eccentric coming down and then of course performing the isometric movements as well so you go the eccentric come down nice and slow with the cons the, you know, yeah with the eccentric come nice down down nice and slow and then you hold uh in between you can hold in between to uh get that i at that that uh, isometric uh, engagement there. So now this is basically really kind of like the same thing as me having the band overhead, but the resistance now, of course, I'm uh, the resistance is come is is more because it's coming from the ground and I'm pulling up and over my head. So there's more resistance involved here. And when we're doing the human flag, remember majority like we're holding our body weight by like our shoulder, shoulders, that pivot point there is the shoulders. So now I'm gonna get into more of the actual specific uh, modality of the human flag, showing you exactly how to go. Right now I'm showing you the, this, this bust out pole is probably not the most ideal because it's a lot thicker than, you know, something where you can actually grip and you wanna be able to grip. It's best to learn as you see here on horizontal bars before learning on the actual uh, parallel bar not parallel, sorry, um, vertical bar. So right now I'm showing you alignment, putting your head through your shoulders. 
So one of the prerequisites for the flag before even trying to attempt is having the alignment. Your head should be straight between your shoulders. As you see, don't start with your head, your eyes looking um, up above you. It should be looking forward in between your head. So your and another thing is the width of your hands. If your hands are that close, it's going to be very difficult. Make sure you give yourself a good enough um, space distance in between uh, before you even attempt that. And remember keeping those head that head in between those shoulders, keeping that alignment, stacking the joints. You see, you should have a nice straight line just like that. So another thing what we're pointing out here is locking out the joints, locking out the arms. Bent and arm flags do not count. Those are not, that is not a complete flag. Having the arms completely locked out, that is where uh, you are in a complete flag. So as you see like that, and it also makes it a lot easier, you know, letting that energy transfer, the pushing and pulling um, into your body by pushing and pulling, having those joints locked out, it makes it a lot easier. So as we went through in the beginning here is having that pushing and pulling arm, pushing and pulling uh, evenly, and that's how you generate the lift like we talked about in the beginning. So the harder you push and pull, the higher your body will come off the ground. So push and pull as hard as you can and you will generate that lift. So the next part is how much resistance are you experiencing when you're doing the flag? So this is the least resistance. So this is a good progression. When you extend your legs, you increase the resistance. And this is the most resistance when you're in a full flag. Keep that in mind. So when you're in a full flag, this is where your muscles are experiencing the most resistance. So do the progressions, get into the tuck, um, you know, then you can accomplish things like that. You see how that that vest just appeared on me like that. It's magic. Yeah, so keep those things in mind. Now I'm just gonna end with showing you some stretches that you can work on uh, after you know your drills and things like that. Work on doing these. This this targets the lats, teres major, teres minor, rhomboids. Once again, the muscles are responsible for that human flag. So work on doing things like this, the unilateral version as well, doing one side. Just be careful with it. You don't want to pull anything. Um, and then this is also good for like the groin area as well. I'm um, getting down like that you actually you do also feel the stretch um down there as well so it's like good for a leg day um just as good as it is for uh doing the human flag training pull-ups and whatnot so i'm going to show you one more just kind of like the dead hang um you're hanging getting that nice elongated stretch uh, as well and these are this is basically all you really need to know for accomplishing the human flag so if you follow all these things you will accomplish the human flag make sure make sure you put a thumbs up on this video if it was helpful and if there's anyone you know who wants to learn how to do a flag go ahead and share this with them so don't leave just yet about to do the intro the outro and you're good to go make sure you subscribe if you are new here Guys, it doesn't make sense not to subscribe your hair. Literally, I guarantee you, if you see one more of my other videos, you'll want to subscribe because the value is real. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, guys, please leave your feedback. If this was helpful, if the video was helpful, let me know in the comment section below. Like, keep it real, guys. This is why I make these videos, is to genuinely help you guys and make you stronger. That's what it is, make you stronger, more knowledgeable, understand that health is wealth. Three. Yeah, yeah. Two. One. Go.